Hi, <laughs> hi everyone. I uh, hope you are all doing great. Uh, we are here today back with the Thrive with Marketing podcast and uh, it's today the episode uh, eight, number eight, and it's, all, it's a special one. It's been almost a year for this podcast and I wanted to, to invite someone uh, someone I, I knew for a, for a little while and she she's here today for to share some uh, some of her, her experience and uh, and uh, well welcome uh, welcome Emma 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 Luis uh, uh, it's well, very lovely to have you and uh, yeah uh, today the topic is going to be something that you know very very well is about the the importance of of well being and and health uh, in this digital era I say digital era digital age. But I meant yeah. to say, like in the workplace, so because we it's, everything become so digital, and we all, you know, using we all, we all uh, I think we get sometimes sucked with with working and not really looking after ourselves or our teams. Yeah. So I like always to start with a little introduction, and uh, she is the founder of In House Health, but she also like to say something about her so i like always to give you the, <laughs> the the opportunity to introduce yourself to those who don't who don't know you yeah so uh, first of all thanks for uh, having me on it's, it's an honor and a, a privilege to be here so hi everyone my name is emma louise fazari and um, as tony said my company is in-house health and we work with digital tech companies using a data first approach to help establish and eliminate the root cause of issues such as work-related stress and employee burnout that's great oh sorry <laughs> yeah uh ma mainly uh well that's she does that um, and other amazing things because uh, <laughs> i follow her well actually uh, we met like uh, if i remember well in a networking event quite a while ago in manchester and yep. one of the things that one of the things i like about her is like how uh how uh, supportive lovely and approachable person she is so and i wanted to add that to your, to your story so let's carry on and so next next thing we let's get into dive into the talking about mental health uh what is one of the main challenges you have to deal with uh, as an entrepreneur these days yeah, so um, I, I suppose for me personally, uh, being in startup lab, it's time. Uh, time is something that seems to uh, vanish so quickly. Uh, there's never enough hours in the day. And I don't know about you, Tony, but I know that when um, you're first starting out and, and you're managing things and, and you're getting ready for growth, it feels quite often like you're doing the job of, um, lots of different people. Um, I was I was uh, rushing to a meeting yesterday that actually I thought was online, and it, it turns out it was in person. Um, luckily, it was just around the corner, um, and that was part of my role as a, I'm a director um, at my local golf uh, golf course. Um, so not even anything to do with my own business. So I feel like in my business, I'm probably doing the job of about four people. Uh, okay. So you know. Um, Chief Technical Officer, um, Marketing Director, Business Development, Delivery, like all these things um, that actually when you set up a business, you set it up because you you have a purpose or, or you're good at doing something, but you can automatically just pay people to do all these things for you. So for me, um, I really struggle with... Um, time and I think actually when you have all these things it's easy to get overwhelmed and then you procrastinate and your to-do list just gets longer and longer longer and longer um and I think another thing I, I've I, I wouldn't say I struggle with but um being a health tech company and, and developing tech products uh, being a non-technical founder being a nurse by trade uh, it's that's been a huge challenge uh, over the last 12 months for me is uh, I always describe it as uh, in the Harry Potter movies when you have uh, Dumbledore and he's trying to get Harry Potter Potter's memories out of his his head that's kind of what the tech team are having to try and do with me I'm like no I, wa I want it like this and they're like we just don't get it so they're trying to extract my thoughts 
and to develop it into the tech. So that's been a huge challenge at the minute. Yeah, I, I well, I I feel exactly <laughs> your your pains in in many ways because obviously the lack of the time is so absolutely important. And we sometimes like to work more in what we like, the part of the business, but then we have to get involved in lots of different areas, and we need to, even if we delegate or get support from from team or anything, you always have to get involved in so many different things in so many different areas and not always have the, the time or the the motivation to do it but you have to crack on and yeah. do it so so it's yeah. hard at, at the end of the day if we have a purpose and that's, that's what really matters and what what really drives drives us to, to get to get somewhere and i like when you say like the, the tech the tech aspect of things uh and even i mean i think like we all these days uh new generations come in new technology come in lots of things they need to adapt and, and work with uh, to help and make our jobs easier. But then obviously some we need to surround ourselves with people who are helping us and teaching us on how to make the most of that, that technology because otherwise it's just not gonna happen. It's not it's not as easy. So so yeah. it's is it's absolutely uh, I think most most uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, especially from small businesses like like us, they, they will they're listening to us so watching us they will recognize that they, they will see themselves in the same situation so yeah and yeah. I, I came up with a, a phrase um about i think it's about 18 months ago it was i was on another podcast actually and uh, it was about using your time twisely so it's <laughs> using your time twice and wisely so for example if i'm going into manchester um or if i'm going to a meeting i will try and uh, use public transport where possible. So the 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 first use of my time is getting to a meeting, and the second time is the ability to do some work on that journey. If you drive, then you can't do that. Or for example, if you if you're practicing, um, you know, some good well being and, and and self care. So you might want to have a bubble bath, but it might be a perfect time to listen to a podcast that you've never got round to. So it's the ability to. Uh, not confuse it with multitasking, but the ability to do two things um, at the same time. I like that <laughs> that expression. So uh, uh, using the time twicely. I love that. I actually, uh, uh, when I, I read books, uh, uh, obsessed about, not obsessed, but like just look at things productivity wise. And sometimes we get to obsess about productivity that we burn ourselves and we will, we will get we will get into that uh, uh, in, in this uh, in this podcast because I think it's important because myself I suffer that uh, burnout because I yeah. try to just do as much uh, uh, at the at the time and this and that but it's true that you can make the most of the time in in a way that is productive and make you feel better because you're getting stuff done as, at the same time yeah so I, I love I, yeah so go no go. it's okay I was just going to say there's a, there's a huge difference between being productive and being busy. Um, you know, you can. There's that phrase about being a busy fool, and actually, yeah, we can spend a lot of time being busy and doing things. But are we being productive? Is it moving us forward on our journey to to success? Hundred percent agree. Hundred <laughs> percent with that. Uh, you, you're not always busy with the right thing, so you can always yeah. make a make the time, make the most of the time in different ways without burning yourself. Uh, so. Why? Well, obviously, mental mental health or health in general is absolutely uh, it's always been important. But then it's some 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 it's coming up, coming as a more popular topic. Uh, uh, people are talking more about it, which is great. And why do you think it's important nowadays uh, for business and for businesses and for for uh, for in the workplace? I mean, for uh, for people in the workplace as well. Um, so I think, you know, you, you said it, it's mental health, uh, health and well-being has always been important. I think, you know, with a, a pandemic, um, it's it's kind of brought the importance of good health and well-being to the, to the forefront. Um, mental health affects how we feel, how we think uh, and how we act. Um, it also determines how we handle and deal with things such as stress, how we relate with others um, and how we make choices. And with the rising digital technologies and um, the, I suppose the, the consuming impact of the always on culture and not necessarily just because 
people are working in the digital tech sector, but, you know, I see it in my own teenage children. You just have to look around and people are um, absorbed into this kind of uh, digital world. Um, it's almost like we're kind of expected to be showing up um, in everywhere, whether it's, um, you know, in a career, whether it's if, if, if you're a mom um, on social media. Um, so I suppose you know, in this digital age compared to perhaps, you know, 30, 40 years ago, uh, we don't have the option, I suppose, to, well, we do have the option, but we choose not to take it to actually just sit at home and read a newspaper, read a book, you know, like switch off. Uh, you know, I, I even remember when I was younger, the shops were never opened on a Sunday. And now it's, you know, you my, my children would be horrified if you were to say, oh, you know, you can't go into Manchester on a Sunday to the to the shops. And I suppose what that means is, is that we're less likely then to prioritise our own health and well-being because we are so busy and we, and we never find that time to switch off. And it's so terrible, isn't it? I mean, sometimes we are bad with ourselves. I mean, I mean, like in a way that uh, you, you stop for a while and then I'm going to take a break. And then and then go on your phone and start checking uh, your emails or all these and that. And then it's like, oh, you don't really switch off it. I mean, found it hard myself. So, for example, obviously it's about setting habits. But I think we we you, we tend to set uh, habits that are more related or tech related or social media related or whatever. And and we should be spending more time uh, setting some some healthy habits. And yeah. And what, yeah. No, sorry, I was just going to say, as a, you know, when, when you do run a business as well, it's like there's almost like this guilt associated because the list is never ending of things that you have to do. There's always this guilt if you prioritize time to actually stop and perhaps watch the telly or go, you know, go for a walk or, you know, even ridiculous is spend time with the family. At the back of your mind, you're always thinking, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. And it's those thoughts and behaviours that do lead us down a slippery slope to, to burnout, really. So, but it's, it's the guilt. It's a strange thought process. It's the guilt associated with stopping and relaxing. And actually, I've got a theory that we should, like, relaxing and, and looking after ourselves should be first, and then we should do a little bit of work in between rather than the other way around in, a, in an ideal world. Yes, yes. You cannot help others if you don't don't help yourself. <laughs> and, uh, uh, do, you, do, you, uh, do you follow any, do you have any sort of like advice or do you have any habits that you set yourself to avoid getting so like a stress or to switch off any, any quick uh, habit that you, you, you share with the, uh, I, I really should practice what I preach, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it doesn't always uh, w work out that way. Um, for me, uh, and I suppose the dip, there's, a, there's a difference, isn't there, between uh, running a business, being a kind of uh, micro business, being a you know an employee of a company. There's all si sorts of different um, mm. behaviours, but for me, it's about setting boundaries. And actually, you know, sticking to them when, when you set them, you've set them for a reason and sticking to them, whatever works for you. So um, I've started. So I, I'm more creative at night time. So I'm really not a morning person. So like around this time, this is when my brain starts kicking in. So I will often work perhaps till eight. Well, we have a, a late tea around eight o'clock. So I will often work kind of up until eight o'clock at night. Some people will think, oh, my God, that's crazy. Like, you know, people have a typical nine to five job. So for me, it's um, being aware of that and not when I am up early some days, not doing kind of 12 hours solid without taking breaks. So for me, that's important. Um, I've also um started uh, a habit of making sure that I have a proper lunch. I think it's easy when you're busy to, um, you know, just grab some junk food and and keep going. And actually, it's not the it's not the best for productivity to for focus to um, get the 
the best out of yourself. So uh, we talk about feeding your body, but actually need to feed your brain as well. As well, uh, And part of that with another habit is limiting my time on social media where possible. Um, you know, with, with nutrition and you're feeding your body, with what we see online, uh, we're feeding our brain. And if a lot of it's negative, then that slowly seeps into our thought processes, um, our mindset, our mood, our emotions. So actually limiting that where possible is um, is, is a good habit. Absolutely, absolutely. And with the with the, the lunch time, I mean, I'm, I'm sure lots of people listening will relate that if they're working for themselves, it's like I do sometimes take like literally like five, ten minutes to eat the salad and then and then go go back straight to emails, calls and stuff. And it's like at the end of the day, like like saying, Wow, what's going on? But then having the, the time and even if it's just to do some reading or anything, I think it'd be is beneficial and avoid a, a little bit of social media for some yeah. time because <laughs> it's yeah and one of my biggest bugbears actually with companies is uh organizations that do lunch and learns um we i've seen it a lot during the pandemic with you know the zoom calls and or, or teams or whatever where they would get an expert or you know a, a well-being provider in to provide some training at lunchtime and for me like your lunch is is everyone's opportunity to down tools to um reset the body get away from you know stretch walk around have something nice to eat get away have a break and the thought of people um eating their lunch whilst learning about well-being at the desk it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's contradictory and ironic yeah, really yeah. um i've got um i've got a digital well-being masterclass actually and uh since i, I created it and i've been delivering it all the delivery's been all, all online and i'm like the you know the irony is not lost on me that i'm delivered delivering a digital well-being course on, <laughs> online um but you know it, we tech gets a bit of a rap, bad rep but actually it does have its benefits um so so yeah it is it is what it is yeah it is what it is and it's hard it's hard to control yeah. and then like you say oh, kind of like forcing your employees to join a class while they are eating maybe not the best solution yeah, yeah. yeah. so let's let's uh let's change something a bit you know more fun or different tell, tell us any fun uh, anecdote uh, or anecdote or something that happened to you in a in the time that you've been running your business or something like people would not know about you that could, that could sound like interesting for them um so i've got um obviously being um a nurse i've got many many uh, funny stories uh, from uh, my career in in the nhs and uh, what one that I, I tell people um it's normally the women actually but it's just um at the end of the day we're, we're all people aren't we and and it's all things so one of, part of my role when i worked in general practice was uh, chronic disease management um public health promotion and health screening so uh, part of that was doing um, women's uh, cervical screening so I had this lady turn, turn up and it's, it was always I always felt like it's my role to make people feel comfortable to keep the language simple so that it was and um, people understood what was happening and um, gain consent etc so anyway I told this lady to you know take her a bottom half, half off get up get up on on the bed and you know typically my conversation was around like what funky socks people were wearing and things like that so anyway i go to do the do the uh the, the smear test and uh this i said to this lady um oh is it a, a special occasion today and she was like um oh no why and anyway i said oh just have a look and instead of um putting some talcum powder on uh, down below, she had uh, used um, some glitter powder, so <laughs> so she had this, um, she had this, <laughs> this shiny um, vagina area. So it, it was quite funny, but kind of um, tell that story in a lot of the women's health talks that I do, just to break the ice and to kind of let them know that you know, as a nurse, we we don't really care like 
how people present to us. We just want people to come. We want people to be preventative to, to get seen as, as soon as possible. But I suppose I'd, I'd done a post that actually um, on Sunday um, on LinkedIn about, um, you know, a, an icebreaker in some of my masterclasses that I ask is what's a fun or interesting fact that perhaps your colleagues uh, don't know about you. And I'd, I'd put that I, I play poker. Um, so that's... Yeah. Uh, one of my interesting facts that I actually, um, it's a joke that I won a husband playing poker, but I did um, <laughs> my husband playing poker. Um, and since the pandemic, I, yeah. I've also taken up golf. Um, so I've, I've, I'm really into that at the minute. And actually playing golf is, has been paramount in protecting my own health and well-being during the the pandemic, I find it ticks many boxes. So I was um, getting out in nature, I was exercising, I was um, meeting other people. So it, it, as a as a hobby or a sport, it ticks lots of boxes. So for me, that's kind of saved me. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool a story about your, about your husband. <laughs> yeah. So you met playing poker. That, we did, yes. Yeah. You yeah, never you know never when know. you're gonna meet. Yeah, you have to put yourself out there. <laughs> That's the. Yeah, yeah. You so, never know when you're gonna meet your your future wife or husband. So people, yeah. you need to get yourself out there. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. when people say to him, "Oh, what's your what's been your biggest win?" Mm. He always says, "My wife." I'm like, oh, very, very cheesy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's true, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, and uh, yeah, the golf golf. I mean. Uh, that is, is brilliant. I mean, it, I think like it all goes down to like having some sort of sports habits that get you out of your office, your computer for a while, your business. Yeah. Or, although you can network with people and kind of connect, yeah. but then at the same time you're doing you're practicing something and you're playing. And and for me, it's more like about running and half marathons and things like that. But <laughs> one day, yeah, I will get into into golf because it sound, sounds very very interesting. So. Going back to mental health and well-being in the workplace, yeah, and uh, these days, digital world, uh, why should companies take take it seriously, and what advice would you give them? Yeah, so you know, like the the biggest as asset a company has is its people, but actually, the biggest asset that their people have is is their own health and well-being. You know, health health is wealth. Um, they they say, um, and it's not just because it's the right thing to do. There is actually a real business case for doing it. There was a Deloitte study in 2020, um, Employers Report, um, that showed that actually businesses are losing, <clears throat> excuse me, on average, £2,200 per employee per year to poor mental health. Uh -huh. So... If that's not a reason for investing in in good health and well-being, and I say good health and well-being because, um, you know, lots of people are doing well-being, but perhaps it's a token gesture or a tick box exercise, um, then you know, can, can you afford to be losing that much money every year? If you you know if you've got a hundred employees, that's a, a hell of a lot of money to be losing. Yeah, yeah, it's lots of money, and. Uh... You know, like, it's also like, I feel like when people talk about it, because I've been talking to people and, and when we hire or work with someone and then we think about, well, some people talk about nobody is replaceable. In my opinion, I think in, I think people are people and we need people and we need them to be, to be treated uh, in a unique way that they can feel like they value, they value in the jobs, but then also, you know, value only their skills or what they can they, what they can produce for you, but you can value also them as a person, as uh, their motivations, the the things that they they've going through, and all of that. And yeah. uh, but this, yeah, this could definitely take a <laughs> could be a, a ten hours uh, ten hour session. <laughs> we could uh, be talking about this. Uh, absolutely, but you know, at the minute, I think the stats are something like there are currently more jobs than there are unemployed people. So it's an it's an employee's marketplace at the minute. They have the choice of wearing um, for who they, they work for. And actually, the the younger generation, the, the pandemic has changed what people want from an employer. And they, they want uh, 
to work for an organization where people genuinely care for them, where people um, are not going to kind of chew them up and spit them out after they've they've had the best work for them. It's um, I think I'm, I'm trying to think there was a study I read the other day and it was around um, what mattered most to people and recently we've seen a lot of increase in um, salary haven't we to attract people to their companies and actually that was third on the list it wasn't the, the top on the list so I think top was well-being and second was flexibility so yeah. if businesses want to continue to grow to to innovate and attract you know the top talent or you know good people with good values that will help them succeed then they're going to have to change their ways and adapt yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. uh obviously more people searching for jobs <laughs> more new talent coming up uh, coming and uh, rising and then ready to take jobs and lots of opportunities out there so you gotta stand out you gotta offer people something and then be genuine i think being genuine is that the part of the businesses they the bigger they get <laughs> yeah they, they, they lose a bit of uh of uh not the culture only, but also the, the the way they they connect with people and all of that. So, you have any tips on that? Uh, uh, what 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 are the key things you recommend people to take care of uh, their well their staff well being? We're talking about people that hire people, maybe their staff well being. Yeah. So so for me, it's important that well being is. Um, is viewed as a strategic arm of a business. Uh, for so long, it's just been an afterthought or, or reactive. And um, so, yeah, it needs businesses need to take a strategic approach to well-being. They need to leaders need to role model behaviors. It's all well and good um, saying we want you to do this and do that, but actually, role modeling is is really important um, so that well-being is embedded into the culture. Uh, active listening, I'm sure you hear that term a lot uh, in mm. digital marketing. Um, but actually, we need to actively listen to our employees. What is it they want? What is it they need? And for me, and part of the reason why um, I set up in-house health, is to use the data to do that, to under not only just understand the needs of, of your employees, but actually understand um, how their health and well-being is impacting on your business. Um, not just seeing a return on investment um, for your spend, but actually how that impacts your wider targets, um, your OKRs, your KPIs, the impact on your customers um, and, and the like. So, so yeah, it's uh, for me, it's, it's no longer or it shouldn't be seen as this fluffy and unmeasured uh, subject it needs to be preventative it needs to you need to be proactive um, and you need to do it in a good way so that you get into the root cause of problems yeah because it's cool to have like oh yeah we have a, a ping pong table we have a pool table we do this we do that but then that's not a uh, i mean first to start with i don't think that's the culture i mean culture is not you know what you offer is how you do it and how you show the values and then i like what you say that it's about active listening listening to people and caring about them and doing something for them but not only yoga class uh, oh yeah one yoga class if you like to join at seven in the morning uh, before before working and then and then everything is done it's a bit more 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 than that listening to them or what they, they do at the job and then the other thing you mentioned about obviously Obviously, it's something uh, that they, they need to uh, uh, they need, you need to preach. So, if you leaders in the company or the owners of the company or the people in the company, the manage the managers, they're not they're not actually doing what they actually promote prom promising and all of that. And then you can say that you are very doing that, doing this, but then the day to day basis, you are micromanaging, you are treating people like shit, all of that. It's just not gonna work. I mean, marketing. Sometimes, what I get, what I see myself in some situations is companies that they are uh, showing some sort of marketing that the culture and the the you know the wealth being the plan and all of that is very yeah. cool. And then what you what you hear of uh, what you realize and what you what you what you hear when you're talking to to someone, the opposite is like well, that's that's the they don't really 
this is that so something different to, to take care of for any type of companies these days. So, yeah. Uh, and I think, in, um, just, sorry, just, just to expand on that, um, you know, what I see around the current well-being practices is a lot of it is for the already healthy people. It's uh, it's not for um, the unhealthy people. So, for example, your cycle to work, your your free fruit, your yoga sessions. Therefore, um, a, a person I've created called Skinny Susan, but she's already healthy. She's already paying for these things, but now she's getting this added bonus at at work. But what about Fat Bob in accounts? He's the guy that's. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that's at risk of a heart attack, a stroke, a mental health breakdown, but he's not going to put a leotard on and start start doing yoga. So for me, we have to be more realistic in, in what we do. And actually, that's why I, I've I created the Meta program, because we measure the employee health data through our one-to-one -one health checks. And it's kind of like the market, the well-being marketing strategy to the employees. It's saying, listen, Bob, if you don't sort your shit out in five years time, you're going to have a heart attack. The next time we do, a, you know, a, a, a program or a masterclass or some training, Bob's like, oh, yeah, that's for me then, because he's he's been told by a healthcare professional that if he doesn't sort, you know, if he doesn't make behavior changes, then he'll be in trouble. And for me, that's the whole point. It's it's all these little touch points that that need to be there to embed well-being um, successfully within an organization. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think it's like obviously uh, uh, if it's the same as when, when marketing companies do marketing, and then they obviously need to outsource to someone in order to create um, brands for marketing that works. But they, they actually they actually. Uh, uh, links with their, with their, their objectives, etc. It's the same with, the, with in this case for your program, this meta program. I mean, if companies are doing something in order to do it properly, you need to kind of like get some guidance on okay, it's not about like you say doing running these classes, about analyzing your people, see what they need, and then proposing something that really, really actually or could work for them, so I make their lives uh, a bit better and they can enjoy more working and as a result of that, they can obviously produce more, work better, and stay longer, and all of that, which is the, the last, obviously, the last main goal of of uh, these businesses as well to get the to keep the staff retention as well and the staff motivation. So we are we do use lots of tools these days. At least, I mean, myself, I use lots of digital tools, uh, and uh, like and and uh, uh, I always ask this question. I like to ask. What are the few, two, three tools that you could not live without uh, these days? In business, okay. Well, for the first one, which I suppose it's business, but it's not, is my uh, insulin pump. So I'm type 1 diabetic, um, and I have the latest um, technology. So it's an insulin pump and sensor. So it's like uh, I'm like Iron Man. This is like my pancreas. <laughs> it's keeping me alive as I walk around. Um, it's got lots, it's got um, new AI in it as well, which is really interesting. Um, although it's quite annoying because it's, I, I had one before, which was Bluetooth and now I'm all wired up again. So uh, <laughs> that's my first tool that I literally couldn't live without. <laughs> I, would, I would would be dead. Um, so <laughs> going back to, to business tools, um, and as, uh, I don't want you to eye roll at this, but it's Canva um, because uh, as someone, like I said earlier, who does everything in my business at the minute, including my own uh, marketing, uh, I've just find it a really um, intuitive and, and easy to use tool for me to create images, to keep on brand and, and things like that as I, as I put it out. Um, Spotify, uh, I cannot live without Spotify because actually when I'm working and I'm in deep focus, uh, I have music on in the background, but it's also, music is also great for, for well-being. If I'm feeling stressed or uh, depending on which mood I'm in, then music for me is, is a great healer. It's um, great to uh, release uh, stress and tension uh, so uh, I love Spotify and then LinkedIn, um, I suppose, um, as, as, a, as a kind of tool, but I've met so many great and wonderful people 
on there um, and it, it helped me feel connected still when we were in the lockdown and things like that and it's it really is um it, it really is good although i must say the quality um of posts are going um downhill a bit recently uh, there's lots of people that just copy other people um mm. and i'm i'm not getting bored with it however there's uh, less originality out there at the minute so you know you see one post and then all of a sudden everyone's copying the same format or something else so so yeah 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 they are like people follow the all the people and try to copy and uh yeah they they and <laughs> the spotify for me is one obviously uh massive because i love music and i think every moment or every situation of the day has different type of music and if, yeah. if you're doing something they need to chill a bit you put some like chill music in it and it's, it's a tool that I could not live with that, without. And Canva, yeah. Canva, obviously, I'm not really good with design because I kind of like outsource that part uh, to someone. But I have to use it sometimes. So I believe uh, Canva, is, uh, <laughs> Canva is also a really, really cool, uh, really good one. And uh, yeah, when you say LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn is, I mean, it's so powerful. But then some people are just like making, like you say, not only copying, but also with the also with uh, with like uh, like uh, spamming you know like messaging and all of that uh, I do hate that from of LinkedIn on LinkedIn it's like it's like constantly people trying to message you oh, you this is this. but then oh, then it's a great tool I mean to communicate to connect and link with others and learn with others although what you although how you say like people have been copying but then also people I think it's great that some people I think are using it just like as a tool to see how how much reach I can get with no matter what you're talking about or sharing like anything personal stories and things like that, which is great. Yeah. But but I think it's a it's a very very powerful tool. And from all the social media channels, for me, uh, it's better it's, be, it's the best one. Uh, I, I love Twitter. I don't know if you lo like Twitter, but Twitter is another one that I love. But LinkedIn yeah. and Twitter with, with Twitter. I don't, I don't, if I'm honest, I don't quite get Twitter. I'm on Twitter, but <laughs> it's like, you know, what is it like you tweet is only relevant for two seconds or something like that. And then it's 20 seconds and then it's, it's dead literally. And f for me, that's, um, that's a huge issue around digital well-being Cause it, for me, that suggests it's designed for people to stay on it for longer. So do I really want to get sucked into that? Probably not. Yeah, it's kind of like the same as happens with the with the Instagram, and you, they they obviously uh, obviously the, the algorithm you know is, uh, benefit obviously if uh, uh, people that are spending more time uses different uh, formats, different content, video reels, and all of that, and people just creating massive lots of content, lots of content, lots of content, and, and it's time consuming, isn't it? It's like <laughs> yeah. So, when, I, when I see that on Instagram, I just think oh. Like, where do you get the time? Like, you know, because I see a lot of solopreneurs doing lots of uh, videos, like you see these reels and things like that. And I think that must like, are you not, if you're not doing any work anywhere, it's like, I, I know, I know, I know. Same, 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 for, same, same, for, same for Twitter, same on Twitter. I think like yeah. oh, on Twitter, how is this people managing to share oh, blah, 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 when how do they, when did they get the work done <laughs> don't, yeah. we don't have the time for that yeah so. and, I, and again you know all these apps all have a place to play in how it impacts our, our well-being the, the great marketing tool is great for business but there has to be some kind of cut off um, i've done a post uh i'm gonna say a few weeks ago but it's probably a few months ago i don't know time's just all blurred at the minute still but um and it was around uh the filters on instagram and actually i was talking at a future of uh, work event last week and i was asked about a question in about the metaverse so well, when oh, people yeah. come you know and they have their office in the metaverse and they come and they have um their avatars are they going to be like taller slimmer like what whatever and actually i was saying well it's already happening on current social media channels with these filters and it's it's a shame really that you know it's people feel like they can't be their authentic self or they can't be accepted for for who they are and as a 
as an organization, as a workplace, we need people to be able to come to work in and be themselves so that they can do their best work, that they can, they can, you know, have that sense of purpose and belonging. And if people are fake or feel like they have to be fake, then that's either not a good culture or you're not getting that true person shining through. So, so yeah, it's a, it's got a lot to answer for, but then, you know, there's, there's always two sides to the coin and there are positives. I hate being negative. So we'll, we'll flip it back to po- being positive. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, obviously, obviously in social media, uh, get me, you, get, it could be very positive, can be very positive. We we'll learn lots of things from it. We can yeah. use it as a tool. But then like <laughs> the other hand is like, can be like very negative because it can impact how uh, people's, uh, you know, behaviors and, uh, and uh, provoke other, you know, type of, you know, issues. So we are approaching to the end of this session. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I'm having a really good time. I could be talking like for hours and hours with Emma because uh, I think that, and especially about things like obviously business, mental health, well-being and all of that because uh, it's a topic, it's a topic that, we, we, we all should be talking about we also have in mind but not all not only talking about also doing things about it uh so name name uh, would you name or some people to follow people that we, you would recommend or any books or i'd always like to ask some things like oh you recommend any band any any person any people any person to follow someone to follow that you would recommend uh so <laughs> I mean, I'm not really a big follower of people myself. I kind of just do my own thing. Um, but I would recommend that you follow um, a lady called Hannah Cox, who is from the, uh, she has a sustainable impact agency called Better Not Stop. So if you're interested in um people planet uh, before profit then she is really good to follow she's manchester based um really really cool person uh she's helping me actually i'm doing my b corp um certification so she's helping me with that um follow me if you're listening <laughs> uh, i uh, you know my knowledge and experience comes from 20 years of being in the nhs so um i have lots of experience um but also i have my own thoughts and um of why things should should be done in a certain way and that comes from my my clinical experience um and then another uh, fun one i would say is ryan reynolds uh i think uh well not only is he uh, quite good looking but he is um <laughs> uh, uh, that's for both men and women i would imagine <laughs> but, um, i i think he is he's really intelligent about how he has gone about um, raising his profile, about how, because he invests in other businesses, his marketing, the comedy around that. I just, I find him really funny, but actually it's quite clever. So in terms of people to follow, that's who I would recommend. Uh, um, in fact, I don't know if you see, did you see his cybersecurity uh, video that he done? It was with the no. Mexico Club. It no. was about having secure passwords um so check check that out if you can um it's 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 hilarious i but am sorry. i am i am i am typing everything and i will obviously share with uh, everyone in the comments yeah. the, the, uh, uh, with books the- so in, in terms of books do you know what i've probably bought the last two years i've probably bought about 50 books and i've i've finished about two of them everyone people recommend books don't they so i'm like oh that sounds good i'll buy it and then it just goes on my shelf um and i suppose that's because we get absorbed on our digital tools and we forget to actually pick books up but two i would recommend um one is oversubscribed by Mm -hmm. daniel Priestley. don't know if you've read that one um Mm -hmm. but it, it looks at uh how to um more about demand and supply rather than supply and demand um, so to, to be able to achieve more money for having fewer clients. Um, and the one thing by um, Gary Keller. And when I read that book, so it's, it's basically about not multitasking. It's about focusing on one thing that is going to move you further 
um, on on your journey. And actually, when I read it, a lot of the things that he says in the book are things that I preach when I talk about well being. So um, I, I really enjoyed that book. And actually, I read it when I had COVID at Christmas. And since then, this year, I've accelerated my growth quite quickly. And I believe it's to do with following some of the principles in that book. Um, in terms of music, I have a wide eclectic taste. My husband would say that means a rubbish taste in music. <laughs> but um, for me, uh, so I, I listen to all sorts on, on spot, Spotify, but I love 80s music. Um, so the, the cheesy power ballads to getting up and dancing, you know, to burn that, that stress off. And what I love is, because I've been watching uh, Stranger Things with um, ah. my teenagers, that that's really... Um, revamped the 80s music in this generation so yeah. the, the girls are walking around singing 80s tunes and so it's <laughs> it's almost like uh, built a connection between us because of the the same music interest just from that program so uh, uh, that's why i would say 80 not not any particular bands but just follow mm. what's going to lift your mood and and keep you upbeat yeah, the 80s are, are cool, right? Uh, uh, what the California Dream? California Dream uh, is the, the one of the songs uh, yeah. from from the Stranger Things. I yes. think it's Calif California Dreaming, the Beach Boys. Yes, was that the Beach Boys? Yeah, so that's probably yeah, like yeah, a late seventies, early eighties tune. Yes. But yeah, that was in yeah, season yeah. season four. But yeah, that's because uh, they were in California. No spoilers, <laughs> no spoilers though. <laughs> No spoilers, yeah, no spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, uh, just, I, I know you're probably going to wrap up now, but one one thing I would like to say, so just to touch on personal well-being. So I'd, I'd said earlier about setting boundaries, but actually for me, there's there's two main things how to look after your well-being, and it's really simple. It's going back to basics. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting good, you know, good quality sleep, exercising, <laughs> And look, look, you know, watching what you eat in terms of does it have the right nutrients in. I always say eat the rainbow, and that doesn't mean a, a large bag of Skittles. It's, it's lots of different colored foods. So, um, so yeah, so for me, that just keep going back to basics. And the reason that, you know, I, I keep saying it is because we just forget because we're busy. And the second, second thing is find some purpose and meaning in what you're doing, whether that's a hobby through your work or whatever. Um, it's one of our, um, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is um, mm. finding purpose in life and, and what we're doing. That's what sets us different from animals and insects and all the other species is that as humans, we need purpose in our life. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I could not agree more with you. Uh, uh, sleep, <laughs> sleep, <Yeah>. eat, <laughs> eat well, and yeah. Uh, yeah, find something to to look forward to look forward to something uh, to fight for uh, any purpose. And uh, no, no, I, li I like when, uh, for example, is Stephen Bartlett. Uh, I, I don't know, you, you know, Stephen Bartlett. Uh, yeah, I'm just not. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just not a fan. Not a fan. Okay, no. <laughs> right. Well, so, you can uh, tell the story, though. <laughs> it's, no, it's, your but, <laughs> it, it obviously is, is very, is very social media influencer in this in many ways and talks about all this mental health and look at this. You might not be as as fun because maybe it's touching some topics, and uh, yeah, but I like when he say things like uh, you don't have to, you don't need to have your life figured out right now. Mm -hmm. And I think I agree. I, I will hundred percent agree with that because sometimes it's like you need to have the hundred percent purpose. What you know, what you need right now in your life. And when you see, and it happens to those people when they see other people successful, they now oh, I I know they're quite there yet. Whatever, blah blah blah. I think it's like going back to what you say in terms of like uh, feel okay with getting up in the mornings. What what you do and and what and you don't need to perfectly love it. But it's, it's something that keeps you like going and and excited about excited about it, and uh, but I like that. Do not need to be completely figuring out. Oh yeah, I want to be like in twenty years time because I, and uh, uh, he also says something that he when we wrote the book that which I read, which is which is cool. I mean, you have to take yeah. it as as it is. You know, it's a book to give some to share experience right but then he says things like obviously like oh when i wrote i wrote a note saying uh, when i was like 
12 year old, I wanted a hammer or a discard, I wanted to be a billionaire. You don't have to be billionaire, a millionaire yeah. or billionaire to be happy anyway. Yes. So, so, but sleeping is, is sleeping and looking after yourself and the basics, right? Maslow, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think is the best advice you can ever give to anyone, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. But in and, this uh, in this world of consumerism, it's often the first things that get left out. So it's uh, exactly we all need reminding. Exactly, and if you don't sleep well, you're you're gonna be grump, grumpy all day, and you're gonna be like not gonna perform well. And uh, you're and then if you don't eat well, obviously we we are what we eat. I mean, if we eat well, we feel well. If we eat crap, we feel crap. Yeah. So this well, we're coming to the, to the end of it. The, the 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 session and obviously thank thank you uh, uh, i can't thank you enough i mean uh, i know where we are busy we're very busy people and you are very busy and uh, it, it, uh giving some some of your time and, and knowledge and sharing with people is is uh, is something is the best i mean for me like uh it's very much appreciated and uh and uh yeah well you already mentioned your socials but i like to always to my best to say give us some time to say well you can follow me on linkedin as this and where can people follow and connect with you or subscribe to your stuff is your moment to share now and then i will put it in the comments as well later in the descriptions excellent thank you so yeah so uh, you'd be very proud of me tony so you can uh, follow me on all of the socials um in-house health one so yeah, LinkedIn yeah. in House Health One, Twitter in House Health One, Facebook in House Health One, <laughs> so Instagram. So I'm on all of them in House Health One. And my website is inhousehealth.co.uk. Brilliant. So you make making my life uh, my job easier. So I would love yes. that. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, for uh, that, uh, that it, it, I really uh, enjoy this this uh, this uh, session and now. Uh, I hope we obviously we see each other eventually in a, yeah. in a, one event or for a coffee, and uh, yeah, wish you the, the very best uh, uh, in everything you're doing. And uh, yeah, thank also uh, also the people people uh, people who are listening or watching on on YouTube as these sessions run live. And then will be obviously will be a podcast for everyone to enjoy and listen anytime. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching and listening and uh, see you in the next one. Bye. Take care. Bye.